Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Am I audible? Well, perfect. All right. So thank you so much for joining. Um, my name is uh, Amit. We will talk about uh, shadow APIs and zombie APIs today. Um, I've been an um, API exterminator for uh, PayPal for the past year and a half. Um, I've been developing tools, frameworks to, that, will, that validates, uh, expose, and help drive remediation uh, for this uh, issue. And uh, yeah, let's get on to it. So um, first I'll, of course, define what uh, shadow and zombie APIs are. And I'll show you uh, an example, a few examples, actually. And we'll talk about the preventative um, SDLC on how organizations should implement uh, measures to, um, to stop shadow APIs from being an issue. And uh, finally, some techniques for major uh, frameworks. And uh, the demo, of course. So in this talk, let's set up some, some ground uh, rules. Whenever I will say the word API, what I mean by that will be um, a service from a microservice or a method and endpoint or um, a query for uh, GraphQL or any resource that is available through uh, API consumers. So um, like a, a form, uh, URL that 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 gets uh, some information through a POST request or um, any API request, basically. So so everything we, uh, I will call API. Um, so first of all, shadow APIs. Uh, basically, there are the unidentified. Uh, I am uh, sorry, the official undocumented endpoints. So um, that basically are being exposed through uh, configuration issues or um, some human error or uh, LLM by mistakes. And they are still externally available through, uh, through the gateway. Um, most of the issues are with shadow APIs are that they are not part of the security review process and often uh, lead to areas of, of the organization that are not being tested against uh, by, uh, by the security teams. Zombie APIs, uh, in, they're similar in their uh, risk that they pose, and, um, but they were originated from, from actual working APIs, but they were simply forgotten. So, um, and I, I've encountered a lot of those kind of, of zombie APIs where the developers they, they know about some issues, but yeah, they're saying, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, decommission it soon, or we're gonna sunset the application, or yeah, yeah, it's inactive, but still exposed. Those are still uh, 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 issues that are posing risks to the company. Um, uh, basically, um, in, in, if you want to categorize the, the, this class of issues, they are improper inventory management. Um, and uh, by the, this definition, um, they, they, they leave some uh, areas of, of, of what we call attack surface. Uh, so the, the weakness itself can be uh, categorized as, um, well, in the definition, it says old API versions or endpoints left running unpatched. That's a risk, right? Outdated documentation makes um, uh, some uh, sensitive information that might be available uh, for the, through the, those old APIs. Um, sometimes they host real data. So let's say that, uh, and we'll see some examples of that, but, but if we, by mistake, as a developer, if I, uh, uh, put out a QA with real data and I forget to uh, delete it after, or, and it's still being exposed, then, the, then those are uh, real risks. Some outdated systems will be a risk because they host some vulnerabilities. Um, 
and there are many uh, CWEs that uh, uh, can be considered um, um, as part of this weakness, but that depends on on the, the 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 business logic or how it's being implemented. So, okay, uh, one second. So, uh, anyone's familiar with uh, Resident Evil, the, the the movie and games? Right. I see. I see some heads. Right. So um, let's dive into this this fictional company of uh, uh, Umbrella Corporation. Um, let's see some of the developers' tasks and um, uh, the actions that they took to perform the task, and what was the result. Uh, you can you can imagine this corporation as having uh, uh, um, multiple services that um, expo been expo are exposed through several servers, API gateways, right? Going through firewalls and everything. Just this this is pretty standard, right? You don't have to go into the details. Just understand that they might have many services that are uh, being exposed, and some of them should not be exposed. Um, so so this is Matt. Uh, he's a senior developer, right? He was tasked with uh, upgrading uh, the API spec from version one to version two. Uh, while while he was implementing those uh, some new features uh, in version two, uh, he left the old version one endpoints uh, active. So he was trying to make sure that the transition was smooth. Uh, the old version one APIs were never properly decommissioned. Uh, leading to shadow APIs. So the version one um, was still accessible with many vulnerabilities in it. Uh, that, that, like I mentioned before, could also happen uh, on uh, subdomains and basically any resource that resource that it is still exposed. Okay, so let's go to Alice. She's a full stack engineer. Uh, she uh, integrates a third party uh, debugging tool to troubleshoot some issue with her stack. Uh, the tool registered uh, some additional endpoints um, with the framework API router, so uh, because it needed that to operate. For example, like a Swagger UI or, um, or health checks, right? And uh, she forgot about it, and uh, they were left. Those endpoints were left exposed in production, and uh, that that's that's a major example of a shadow API. Um, James here, uh, he was uh, uh, working on uh, exposing some of the endpoints in his API, and he was using uh, um, um, a dependency for, his, for, for TypeScript, right, an NPM package, um, to expose those, those uh, uh, endpoints. The package itself became outdated, he forgot about it, did not update, did not do an NPM audit or whatever. And um, those endpoints were left accessible in production. So the, the even code that we don't see, even code that we took from other developers might expose those kind of um, shadow APIs, right? And um, you know, it's a general idea, a good idea to check with Snake Advisor when you're installing external uh, dependencies. Um, so, uh, this is uh, Rain. Uh, she's a junior developer. Um, she was tasked with uh, configuring the API router uh, to make sure that the API itself uh, would handle uh, some some endpoints. She was she used a wildcard pattern. So I'm not sure it's probably too small. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but uh, she defined a path with a wildcard, meaning that anything that um, Inputted into this body parameter would pass through to the um, uh, service. So, um, so, some endpoints that might occupy the same path uh, route basically would also be exposed. So, this is a misconfiguration. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll rush a bit because I'm I'm, I'm a, bit, uh, a bit out of time here. Uh, so um, so so Spence here should have 
uh, took the time and decommissioned some APIs, but he basically forgot because he was rushing to push to deployment. And um, here's an example uh, by, by Kaplan of, of deploying a, a, some sort of gateway that bridges between downstream services. And um, basically what he, what he did was he forgot to put some uh, authentication to, um, to limit the access uh, of some downstream services that were inadvertently exposed. Um, so yeah, missing documentation is, uh, is the major issue. This, 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 this is what helps with um, you know, identifying those APIs. And um, you, need, you need to have someone competent enough to uh, make sure that those APIs are uh, properly documented. And I wanted to give an example by, by a, a, an LLM. So the Red Queen is in the, in the movie, she's, she's a, a, a artificial intelligence. And um, in, in this example, she was tasked with working on a feature. She, uh, she took some time, uh, but the branches she was working on um, drifted from um, the, uh, the branch that other developers were working on. And between those, some APIs were, between those, in a divergent of, of, of those branches, so some APIs were uh, unintended, uh, uh, unintendedly uh, exposed, right? Um, so this is like a list, a shopping list of how adversaries uh, identify uh, and discover APIs in general. So brute force running a word list and trying everything until it works, uh, less than optimal, but even a blue team use this to identify some endpoints. Um, you, can, you can identify uh, domain names and the old hosts if you have a history of DNS, and uh, that could also lead so, to some exposure. Um, <clears throat> you can decompile some mobile applications that link to some APIs uh, that also give some information about it, bugs, error messages, uh, logs, and uh, traffic. And uh, some, some even bug bounty scopes might leak this. Okay, so we, we see that this is like a major, a major issue. Uh, and how we deal about, how, how we deal with it. So there's a thing called uh, Open API Swagger uh, specification, basically, uh, that is supposed to be a contract between the consumer of the API and what the API um, uh, exposes and uh, allows. Um, we use this uh, specification to have uh, tools and integration that validate uh, what endpoints we have. And uh, um, we use this to make security scalable, right? So having um, a detailed specification of each and every API that we expose reduce the attack surface that we are not aware about. And there's a thing in Swagger, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Open API called the uh, Swagger extension, uh, which is just an extra parameter you can add to the specification. And um, the recommendation is to add the uh, visibility into it and validate against it in the API level and validate against it uh, in the CICD, right? So if we know about an API that should be internal, we would never add it to uh, the gateway as being exposed from external sources. sources. And um, you can use um, uh, open API spec with many of the uh, um, ASPMs and uh, major gateways um, like, uh, like Kong and um, um, there's a lot, like Microsoft, Google, like they all have their own, everyone has their own tools, Amazon, and that they ingest open API spec and basically, um, you know, stop some access to some APIs based on the specifications. Um, the most important thing that I've encountered while dealing with this issue is, uh, is listed here, basically to know what we have, to have the tools, to have the scripts that are running automatically and, 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 and identifying those in the logs, in, in external traffic, in all of the tools that we have. Uh, open telemetry is a major thing that can be used to identify those. Um, uh, ownership of the, of, the, of the service itself. Um, who do we 
called to uh, in the middle of the night to tell him that there's an issue, right? And, um, and actually finding this in a centralized place is really important. Um, I wanted to speak a bit about thread modeling. I don't think I have a lot of time. So um, basically, thread modeling means that we visualize our network, we find the potential risks involved in the architecture, um, and in this case, what can be exposed and what not, and what can be exposed through various services. Like if a service routes the traffic back to another service, they should be considered within the same level of exposure. And um, I really suggest if, you're have, if you have any interest in threat modeling uh, to go to this link, Threat Modeling uh, Manifesto. There's a ton of information there. Uh, there's also a contest in, in, uh, in Vegas this week that are regarding to uh, threat modeling. And uh, yeah, so also OWASP is a great tool for any cheat sheet or uh, information regarding uh, web application security. So in this demo, I will uh, show um, uh, one technique all among many to identify services for um, ExpressJS, which is a node uh, package used to uh, expose web applications. Um, but, but you can use source code analysis, dependency injection, code injection, um, uh, framework query, simply asking the, the, the framework through its CLI what are the endpoints are, um, using traffic that you've identified in uh, any of your other tools, and uh, of course, brute force URIs always works. Um, and um, yeah, for Spring Boot, you have many options, um, like actuators. If you're using Jersey, then uh, you can use the web uh, application descriptor language that gives an XML. And you can um, use even SEMgrep or other static analysis tools to obtain the uh, annotations that define them, the APIs. And uh, of course, the actuator, which is a debugging tool. Um, and uh, there's, there's a few examples on how to achieve this, but let's move on. So uh, yeah, for in Flask, for example, you can simply use uh, the command Flask routes and it will give you all of the routes that are exposed, even the ones that you did not define in the code, like any dependencies. Um, yeah, I see people taking pictures, like at the end of the, uh, of the talk, I have a QR with a, a link to, um, to a repository with all of these tutorials, like a workshop, all right? So it, you'll have everything. And uh, all right, so let's, let's move on to, to, uh, to the uh, demo real quick. Okay, so I'll, I'll probably skip a bit. So um, here we uh, run a Node.js application. We use the npm run start. This application I've created uh, three years ago uh, it's uh, it's uh, it hosts it's a damn vulnerable application that hosts many vulnerabilities and um, exposes some weaknesses such as shadow APIs. And um, we we run this application. We save the debugging log. You can see. Sorry, you're not seeing the. I'm, I'm really sorry. How do I stop this? All right. Okay, let me start again. So we are running this application. Um, we use uh, npm run start to um, run the application and save the logs. The logs are saved into a, a file. Uh, inside the file, it defines every instance of uh, an API registry uh, in the register, in the router, sorry, that registers um, a method and a path. And uh, we use this uh, log with, in combination with the Swagger file um, to, uh, this is just an example of the Swagger, right? And uh, some of its APIs. And uh, we use this file and a script that I've also provided to parse the logs into a, a file that basically contains all of the uh, endpoints. So the list you see here is all of the endpoints the application actually exposes, even the ones that the developer did not intend to expose. Uh, in this example, we will see uh, a few uh, endpoints. 
And um, so you take this and then you copy it to the folder. Uh, this folder contains a spectral a, a rule, which is a tool used to lint open API specifications. So it goes through each and every path of the spectral file and it will normalize the paths to uh, um, identify endpoints that basically share body parameters. So let me see the, uh, let me show you the example here. So the API, uh, if you can see it, the delete user, um, a user email, the user email is a variable. It's, a, it's called a path variable. Uh, and uh, basically it, ha it can have many names, both on the API specs and both on the um, route that the API register, uh, registered. And um, so we normalize this and then we compare. Uh, we simply run the linter using spectral lint swagger Dot JSON, and you can see that it provided us. If you can see to your to your right there, with the API that are uh, exposed but are not registered properly. So those register form and a V1 API docs. And um, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, all of these uh, um, scripts and tools are available. Uh, let me just open the last slide. All of these uh, APIs and tools are available um, through this uh, GitHub repository. And um, yeah, so this is just an example, but in this repository there are many examples for like Django, Flask, and, uh, and more. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. I have time for about one question while we let everyone scan the QR code. Um, any questions for me? All right, thank you so much. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks.